you, what do you believe is key to the recovery of the construction sector in a post-COVID South Africa beyond just government spending? I'm glad you are saying beyond just government spending, of which has been uh, what the sector has been talking about for the past 10 years plus, even prior to President Ramaphosa's uh, infamous infrastructure spend, there was President Jacob Zuma's infrastructure spend. The sector certainly needs a lot more beyond uh, spending by government. The sector needs a lot more collaboration between many participants in the built environment space. We need more collaboration and partnership uh, between the professional consultants, the professional engineering firms, the architects, the professional quantity surveyors, and also with the contractors. What we have found in the sector over the last decade or so has been a significantly adversarial relationship between many participants that we find in the sector to an extent that uh, the most important aspect of the built environment space at the end of the day is to deliver world-class infrastructure to our society and to our people. That it's important that we collaborate with one sole objective and that sole objective would be around the delivery of an excellent product at the end of the day for the well-being of our society. This could be education infrastructure, healthcare infrastructure, roads and transport infrastructure, or whatever the case may be. It's important that we collaborate, that we work together, and at the end of the day, have an ability to have meaningful dialogues with government, have an ability to also partner with government in the delivery of this important infrastructure to make our economy competent. How is Congo approaching its recovery strategy and how is it ensuring future resilience? What we found uh, in the midst of the hard lockdowns was that uh, the difficulties that come with being a construction company is that if you're not pouring concrete or laying one brick on top of another brick, you may certainly not have an ability to earn any revenue. Uh, during the hard lockdowns, only our specific sites that had uh, a relationship, a good, decent commercial relationship with an employer that had access to emergency services or an employer that had access to essential services uh, authorizations. On those project sites, Congo continued to operate and Congo continued to earn income during the difficult times. Uh, those clients include the hospital sites and also the sites at, uh, at ESCOM. And the biggest lesson learned there, it's not a new lesson per se, but it's something that uh, commercially we take for granted, that it's quite important to ensure that you have a diversified order book as a business, that you have a decently diversified project base from a project size perspective, from a type of work perspective you are doing, from a geography perspective, and also from the employer that you are working for perspective. So diversification is absolutely fundamental. It's a very, very important uh, aspect to look at, at the sector to ensure that you have defensible earnings and that uh, you are able to withstand the difficult circumstances that, uh, that faced our society due to COVID-19. Companies across all sectors have had to adopt cost containment measures and improve on efficiencies. Um, as a means to survive. What are some of the efficiency, efficiency drivers that Conco adopted during this time? We had to look deep within our value chain as an organization to find any wastages, to find any inefficiencies, to ensure that we remove those inefficiencies, to ensure that we come out of COVID-19 fighting fit, we come out of COVID-19 battle-hardened. So certainly I can assure you that uh, many overheads that were excess overheads, all we had to relook at our equipment base, we had to have a strong look at our asset base, all excess assets, excess capital equipment, all of that had to be looked at with a very strong eye and ensure that we focus solely on our core business and we remove all the inefficiencies in our system. And in doing that and to ensure that uh, we position ourselves better in as, as an organization and in dealing with the difficulties of observing the required control measures in managing the pandemic, you know, matters such as uh, social distancing, we as the organization began adopting technology a lot more and a lot quicker than we had anticipated before. 
uh, some of our sites that operated even during the hard lockdown, such as our Majuba site, we began, insofar as social distancing measures are concerned, we began deploying more technology around some of our leveling equipment that are reliant on the GPS, where people are not interacting face to face. And really what the controller is doing in those uh, type of initiatives is to start the equipment and switch off the equipment. And the equipment follows specific GPS coordinates and follows specific, specific uh, uh, coordinates to do what it needs to do. And there's we avoid a rework, we avoid any wastage, and we ensure that we maximize our earnings at this particular project site.